Uh, thank you very much. Uh, as Simone introduced, this work uh, is a collaboration from I'm sorry, Anthropological Institute and Museum and Institute of Computational Science at University of Zurich. Uh, generally speaking, bottom-up models can be described as an assembly of independent discrete units that follow some specific behavior rules. So that the large-scale behavior of the system arises from nonlinear interaction of these units and from the interaction of these units with the environment. Example of such bottom-up models are uh, agent-based models, individual-based models, and cellular automata. And using the definition from the ecology, we can describe agent-based models as larger frameworks where individuals or agents have a lot of properties and functions so that the system can be is very flexible and we can describe uh, the behavior rules very close to biology and individual based rules are simpler. However, they can be described in terms of the master equation. The bottom-up models are very practical if one would like to consider inter-individual variation uh, explicitly and allow to test some biological assumptions that is sometimes not possible in equation-based models. Uh, we are interested in a bottom-up model of uh, human dispersion. However, uh, we would like to start with a simple model. So it's a limited approach to the fischer kolmogorov equation. We would like to have a model which is suitable for validation or evaluation of large-scale patterns from a more biological IBM or IBM. And we would like to have a model that can be extended to a difficult IBM or to, to a modified IBM. And the very important point is that we would like to have a model which is suitable for large-scale simulation so that we could parallelize and use the, the high-performance computing. However, uh, these simple models are usually defined in terms of continuous time uh, or one-step process. So in a continuous time, only one individual acts and time. Uh, and we can speak of this process as a personal one. Uh, these uh, continuous time models are difficult to parallelize since everybody has to wait for the action of one individual. So therefore, we propose here a discrete time model with a simultaneous acting of individuals. And uh, in the presentation, I will describe the model of growth uh, the model briefly, the model of the diffusion, and then some results from the growth diffusion model. So it is mainly uh, the model that uh, Simone Caligari used for his simulation presented previously. The model of growth is defined as follows. We have a burst probability, which is the linear function of the number of individuals. So it is given in green line. It is a decreasing function of the number of individuals. B0 is a burst probability when the number of individuals is equal to zero. Death probability is an increasing function of the number of individuals, and D0 similarly is a death probability when the number of individuals is equal to zero. At the beginning of time step, we calculate the birth and death probability, and then based on them, each individual decides if it will give birth or if it will die at the end of the time step. So we look over all individuals, and then said we do update. So we have several move, uh, several births and deaths at the end of the time step, and we speak about uh, this uh, birth and death model as a binomial process where uh, births and deaths are two independent binomial processes. Um, the expected number of new births is given by the birth probability multiplied with n, and the expected number of deaths is given by the death probability multiplied with n. Um, the grow rate from the Deterministic logistic growth is given as a difference between this parameter B0 and D0 uh, divided by the time step factor. And the very important parameter uh, in, in uh, our stochastic model is a turnover rate, theta, which is equal to birth probability and death probability when the number of individuals is equal to K. So it defines how many, how many individuals are born and die when N is equal to the current capacity. And we can define actually several models that have different turnover rates, however, on a larger scale, tend to the same deterministic model. So this simple stochastic model can be described with a master equation, and by letting the time step going to zero and increasing the number of individuals, we can show that it approaches the logistic growth. 
Um, and so here I would like to present some results uh, with the different level of discreteness of this model. And to do so, we change the carrying capacity and we change the turnover. So on the y-axis, we have the effective carrying capacity, so the mean number of individuals near the steady state, divided by k. On the x-axis, we have a logarithm of, of k, so k goes from 10 to 1,000, and different colors represent different turnover rates. First point, what we notice is that effective carrying capacity is lower than k, however, with the increase in k, it increases. Uh, second point is when we, when we decrease the turnover rate, fluctuation decline. So here in red we have the highest turnover rate, in green the second uh, high, and then blue and black. So when we decrease the turnover rate, fluctuation decrease, and the effective carrying capacity approaches stay. This is result for B0 smaller than open pipe and D0 for simplicity here and for following simulation is equal to zero. So now when we change B0 uh, and it's larger than open pipe, the situation changes. So here again, red is the highest turnover rate, then we decrease it. However, the uh, fluctuation increase and then with future, a future decrease of the turnover rate, fluctuation decline. Um, so in order to explain this dependency on carry capacity and on the turnover rate, we find a, an approximation for the effective current capacity. And to do so, we present the model as a deterministic logistic growth plus the noise term. And an important value here is the variance of the noise. And for us, it is the sum of the variances of, um, of uh, the growth uh, process, which is a binomial process, and of the death process, which is a binomial process. So here it is uh, two uh, variances um, of the binomial process. This is the final approximation where k is the current capacity, r is the growth rate, and that is a turnover. And this minus sign arises because of the minus sign before the nonlinear term in uh, the logistic growth. So from this approximation, we can see that uh, in the case of no fluctuations, when that is equal to zero, the effective cap carrying capacity is equal to k. However, whenever there is a fluctuation in the system, the effective current capacity will be always lower than k. When we increase k, this term becomes less important, mm -hmm. so that uh, the normalized, uh, normalized n approaches one, which we also could see in our simulations. Uh, second point is the dependency on the turnover rate. And to look at it, uh, we... Um, again uh, look at this approximation and describe the deviation term as a function of the ratio of theta and b0 and b0 is, is a zero and here we plot the deviation term uh, versus the ratio different colors represent the different values of b0 and from this plot we find these two regimes that we could observe previously so first regime is when b0 is smaller than 0.5 of this three lines so we can fix the d0 and go along in this direction, so we decrease turnover rate. So uh, when we decrease turnover rate, the deviation term always decreases. However, when we are now in the regime of B0 larger than 0.5, and we go and decrease the turnover rate, so we go along this line, for example, at first we increase the deviation term, and then it declines. And this arises because of this nonlinear term, which <coughs> we have uh, due to the binomial nature of our model. So now, uh, just to show that, um, just to compare this approximation with the simulation results, here the approximation is given in lines, and the results are given in symbols, and here the case of B0 smaller than 0.5 and B0 larger than 0.5, so this approximation matches the results quite well. Another important point for um, the model of uh, growth is uh, the convergence it wants a one-step process. So we would like to see if we can, if by changing the time solution, we can uh, let our model approach the standard one-step continuous time process. And to do so, we change the time resolution. So we change uh, B0 and B0 by taking the ratio of constant. On this plot, we have, uh, again, the normalized effective current capacity. And uh, on the x-axis, we have a physical duration of the time step. 
So in this region, we have uh, a large time step, we have a lot of events in the time step, and we have a binomial process, so the time resolution is low here. And in this region, we have a smaller time step, uh, fewer processes in a time step, and we speak about a larger time resolution. So a uh, red line is the deterministic carry capacity, otherwise different colors represent a different uh, ratios of theta and B0. Uh, so I guess you cannot see, but crosses represent um, the mean values, so shaded hair represents <coughs> the standard error of the mean, and the lines, the, approxi um, the approximations. So uh, when we look at this approximation again, and let the turnover go to zero, so in this <coughs> region, um, this approximation is the same as the approximation for the one-step process, so, and since our data are represented by it, we conclude that our model approaches the continuous time one step process when we decrease the time step. So, we have a transition from Poisson proce uh, from binomial process to the discrete time towards the Poisson process by increasing the time resolution. An important point here is that when we decre increase the time resolution, um, the relative fluctuation in the system can increase so that the effective current capacity, I'm sorry, can decrease, so that the effective current capacity is closer to K, can increase, so that the effective current capacity deviates stronger from K, or can stay the same, and this is dependent on the actual value of the ratio, and it's also a property of the binomial uh, natural power model. Um, the model of the diffusion is very simple, it's just a uh, random walk uh, with the synchronous update to be defined a certain probability of movement and then when agents move they choose the direction of movement randomly. Uh, on a large scale uh, the diffusion coefficient can be related to this probability of movement and the number of neighbors and for this model we just compare this large scale diffusion coefficient with the with a d defined with these par parameters the probability of movement and the number of neighbors so here we have the variance in the position and uh, the time t and uh, the diffusion coefficient is defined as a, as a slope of this function and the different colors represent different diffusion coefficients uh, where a uh, green one is a high, uh, is, is a larger d so uh, we then measure the slope and estimate the diffusion coefficient and compare it to the microscopic diffusion coefficient so, and uh, they overlap. Now we combine uh, the model of grow and the model of diffusion so that we have a grow diffusion process. And since we could show that in the limits the grow term approaches the logistic grow the diffusion and the, uh, in the movement term the diffusion, um, together we have a fischer coma borrow equation. So, here again, we have a simultaneous acting of individuals. So at each time point, each individual has to decide if it will move, if it will give birth, or if it will die. And then at the end of the time step, we have update. So the number of individuals in each cell is constant during the time step. Uh, due to um, this uh, discrete time step, we can paralyze the simulation and the allows us to simulate up to from up to 30 millions of individuals on eight cores in less than 12 hours. So we start a simulation with 100,000 of individuals, and then that we have a 30 million, and it takes less than 12 hours. Here is an example of uh, such traveling wave from a raw diffusion model, also on Y we had a number of individuals on X, uh, the position and different colors represent a snapshot at different time steps. So the wave is noisy, the wave profile is noisy, and after a certain transition time, the speed of the traveling wave is constant, as expected for a growth diffusion uh, model. Uh, this speed um, is an important output parameter, and we would like to look at it at a different level of discreteness. So here, and to compare it to the deterministic speed of the fischer coma borrow equation, which is equal to 2 um, square root dr. So on y-axis, we have the normalized speed. 
uh, on x-axis we have the current capacity going from uh, 10 to 1000 and uh, different colors represent different grow rates so here in light blue is a larger grow rate and in light green is a lower grow rate and what we note is that when uh, the so first thing is that the uh, speed is lower than the deterministic one um, and that with increasing capacity the speed increases and this has been observed in um, population-based stochastic models and it's explained by the noise on the peak of the wave <coughs> so when the current capacity is low there are a lot of fluctuations um, that kill um, a colony at the tip of the wave so that the propagation of the wave is slowed down or stopped However, when the current capacity increases, um, the noise on the tip of the wave declines so that the wave can propagate uh, faster. A uh, similar effect has an increase of the time resolution, so decrease of the time step. When we decrease the time step, uh, and now we are in a regime where decreasing, well, we're increasing the time resolution leads to a decrease of the noise, so we decrease the noise along, along a in this direction, and when we decrease the noise, uh, there are less extinction on the tip of the wave, so that we can propagate faster. Uh, and finally, there is a dependency on the diffusion coefficient, which is similar. So here in light, uh, light blue, I have a high diffusion coefficient, and in magenta, I have a, a low diffusion coefficient. And we, when we decrease d we decrease the fluctuation on the T uh, and uh, the speed propagates faster. However, the dependency on the D, we can only see when uh, the grow rate is relatively high in, in our case. Um, so furthermore, we can uh, compare these results with an approximation of uh, discrete time population-based uh, stochastic model that uses um, the shape of the wave in order to find the approximation and uses also the fact that the um, D approaches very slowly <coughs> to the deterministic speed when K increases. And so here on this plot, I have um, the approximation given in lines and our results given in symbols and the approximation represents the data uh, quite well. Even so, this approximation was originally developed for a very high K, K to of uh, the order of 10 to the 10, 10 to the 50. Um, so I would like now to conclude uh, uh, that uh, we, we have a model, an individual-based model in discrete time, that in the limit approach to the fischer common work equation. The discrete time, we use discrete time and simultaneous acting of individuals that allows us to parallelize the model and use it on a shared memory machines that uh, that is very useful since we would like to run several simulation of several millions of agents and repeat the simulation with the same parameter set several times uh, because we, we are doing stochastic simulation and we, we, we need that to, to be sure about the output. Uh, then the discrete time step changes the noise property of the system. So if we have a binomial process, um, then an important point in the model can be extended, for example, by adding the genetic data or by changing the growth rate and death rate by exchanging, to, for example, a survival probability that depends on the age of the individuals. Uh, for the growth term, we saw the detect parent capacity is lower than K, and this corresponds also to the results for the uh, stochastic continuous time models, but not agent based. And then when we increase the time step, we approach our, our model to a one-step process or have a transition from binomial to person. Um, furthermore, when we increase the time resolution, it does not always lead to the decrease of the noise. For the growth diffusion process, uh, we saw that the propagation speed is uh, dependent on the current capacity, which is not the case in the deterministic models. However, it is the case in the stochastic models. The speed can be increased by increasing the noise of the front of the wave. 
and uh, this can be done, for example, by increasing K, by increasing the time resolution of the grow model or decreasing the diffusion population. I presented here the one-dimensional case. However, the results can be extended and generally dependency on the carrying capacity and on the grow rate can be also seen in uh, their two-dimensional case. Thank you very much for your attention.